The last time Blackburn Rovers took on Portsmouth, it was back in the Premier League. So let's hope Blackburn have got the shooting boots on as we welcome the visit for Pompey. We'll talk about the match and much more on today's show. That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview. A little bit more subdued than it was the last time you saw me after that shambolic 1-1 draw against bottom of the table, Plymouth. But enough about that. Before I get going, I want you to stop what you're doing, swallow what you're chewing, hit the subscribe button and get bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Now, deep breath and relax. Uh, let's hope Tony Mowbray has taken, his, uh, taken some lessons from that last result. Uh, obviously, we've got some shooting practice that's required. And maybe, just maybe, he will heed some advice from uh, fellow Rovers fans. Uh, bring in the likes of Joe Nottle or some youth maybe to freshen up the 11. We'll talk about the start of 11 in just a second. Let's just get stuck in the meat of the content. That's right, Portsmouth coming back to Ewood Park for the first time in a number of years. Match kicks off Saturday 21st of October and this time last season, or at the end of last season should I say, Portsmouth ended up champions of League Two. As for this season, Brett Pittman currently tops the scoring charts for Portsmouth with nine goals. And they're managed by Kenny Jackett, who used to manage Rotherham. Uh, and over the years, Blackburn Rovers and Portsmouth have met 88 times in all competitions and in all grounds. Rovers winning 38 of them, uh, losing 26, and they've drawn 24 games between them. Over the past few seasons, results have been like this at Ewood Park. Last time these two sides met was all the way back November 7th, 2009. Blackburn coming out 3-1 winners. And the last time Rovers suffered defeat was all the way back in 2007, 23rd of September. Rovers losing 1-0, um, again, in the Premier League. Uh, as the form book shows you right there, Rovers winning four out of the five times these two sides have met uh, in recent years. So let's hope that form continues and let's hope Tony Mowbray uh, decides to uh, make some drastic changes, especially in the front line. Front line, this is the starting level I have chosen for the game, and as you can tell, it's a bit of a drastic change. You don't want to throw all your cards in the fire straight off the bat, but anyway, this is my starting line. Raya, Caddis, in comes Scott Wharton, Charlie Morgrew, and Sam Hart. Into midfield, Chapman, Smallwood, Tomlinson, and Craig Conway. And up front, Joe Rankin, Costello, and Joe Nuttall. Now... Yes, it is a lot of youth in there, but I feel now is the time to play some of these players. Um, obviously, Dominic Samuel, Danny Graham, and Marcus Anderson can't shoot for shit. Uh, midfield is freshening up. Chapman to start, bringing in the, the likes of uh, William Tomlinson in the center of the park, dropping the likes of Whittingham, Corey Evans, I think he must be injured. A fan favorite of everybody's, Elliot Bennett. You know, these players are not going to be uh, too far away from the action. They're going to be on the bench. Um, but I feel it's it's time to bring, bring in some youth. And let's, let's talk about the back four here for a second. Uh, last time out, we played Nayimbi at centre-back, which was bonkers to, to uh, amongst other things. I've decided to drop Derek Williams again. It's a bit of a drastic call, but I think Sam Hart, when he came on for his debut a couple couple games ago, he was pretty solid, and I think maybe, just maybe, a bit of competition at a left-back spot might uh, wake up Derek Williams uh, over the long term. Because this, this is a long old season, and I'm hoping that uh, we do bounce back at the first attempt here against Portsmouth after the, the past two, three results have been pretty terrible for, for Rovers. Uh, also, in the centre of the park, it's time to play a centre-back um, at least one centre back. Uh, Charlie Mulgrew is the skipper. I was considering pushing him up there in, in, in place of Smallwood. So, this is some of the statistics. No major change there. Bradley Dack did score against Plymouth, but Samuel still tops the charts with five goals. Mulgrew with three. Anderson also with three. And Richard Smallwood has two. These are goals in all competitions. As for um, bookings, Elliot Bennett there with four yellows. At Corey Evans also four. Small with three. Bradley Dack is three. And still, most importantly, no red cards. This is the form book for Rovers. Over the past five games, we have suffered a mixture of results. Last time out, obviously, that 1-1 one, one draw against Plymouth. When we did the 25 shots uh, for the day, only four on target. Before that, we suffered that 1-0 sloppy away defeat against Strugglers Oldham. Uh, before that, we also suffered a 
Check a trade defeat against Berry again, the under twenty three squad predominantly, but uh, there were still some senior senior players in there. We have to go back all the way to Saturday, thirtieth of September, for our last win, and that was a what a sloppy, a really poor one nil home win against Gillingham. And then before that, twenty sixth of September, two nil win over Rotherham United. Moving on to Portsmouth, and this is how I think they'll line up: McGee and goal, Thompson, Clark, Burgess, and Rose. Close, O'Keefe, Evans and Bennett, Hawkins and Naismith up front. Most importantly, you don't see top scorer uh, Brett Pittman in there. I think he's injured and he's out for the month. And I believe in the last match, Portsmouth did receive, a, a Portsmouth player did receive a red card. Um, so he has to be replaced. And I think he was a defender. Don't know too much about it myself. But that's how I feel they'll line up. Here's some of the statistics for you. Most goals. Pittman, like I said before, nine goals. Lowe's got four. Hawkins got four. Kennedy has two into the, the bookings and, and the discipline. O'Keefe has four yellows, Burgess three, Pittman has two, Thompson has two. Red cards, Evans one, low one, Dion Donahue also one. I think Donahue was the player who was sent off against Doncaster. This is the form book for Portsmouth coming into this. At the past five games, they won three and they've lost two, but most importantly, last time out, they lost to Doncaster Rovers 2-1. Before that was a 2-0 victory against Milton Keynes at their place. Um, before that, on 8th of October, 1-0 victory at Gillingham. They beat, uh, they beat Crawley Town 3-1 in the Czech Trade Trophy at their own gaff. And all the way back to Saturday, September 30th, Portsmouth losing to fellow strugglers, Oldham Athletic 2-1. So what have the fans been saying about the big build-up to Blackburn Rovers versus Portsmouth now? Well, it's only been a couple of hours since the Plymouth game, so the banter is, is still pretty fresh and pretty minimal. But here is what I found out there. Uh, the Lancashire Telegraph posted an article um, quoting, I can't stand here and over, overly criticise them. Tony Mowbray reacts to Rovers' home draw with Plymouth Argyle. But James Hine was quick to, to comment, After the abysmal performance at Oldham, we need at least seven points from the Plymouth, Portsmouth and Wigan games. And we put ourselves under pressure. Happy with a point at home to bottom of league, Tony? Don't want to sound too critical. Meanwhile, Zahid Iqbal in the posts on the Rovers Facebook page. When Wigan dry hump us next week, we will see the back of Tony Mowbray. With the budget and squad, he has had enough chances. Apart from Rotherham, we have been pretty shit all season. So there were six comments to that. And Zahid Iqbal commented further. Yeah, we are shit against teams in the relegation zone. And the bad news is we have Portsmouth next. Also out there, Apostolos Manolos, also on the Rovers Facebook page. Can't believe people starting talking shite about Mowbray. He's a great manager. Why don't you blame Venkies and players? Bring on Portsmouth, he says. Jack Wright also. Boycott us equal Premier League plastic fans. If we got back into the BPL and was doing well, you would be back. And that's fact. Meanwhile, over on the Pompey Twitter feed, uh, this is what some of the Portsmouth fans are saying. A lot of people saying they would take two points from these two fixtures. Speaking about the Doncaster and Blackburn Rovers game. So let's eclipse that with a win on Saturday. Tom Helmsley, also on Twitter, says, Hi, Kenny, could you let the lads know the kickoff time for Saturday? Maybe that's a bit of a dig, saying they don't turn up until the last 10 minutes. I think Mowbray can also take some, uh, take some pointers from that. We need, to, we need to start on the right foot, explosive from the get-go, get an early goal or two, and then maybe we can, uh, we can show the fans what we're made of and maybe show with the division what we're made of. Anyway, that's all what I have to say and what the fans have to say. But let, what does Casta Cat think about this matchup? She's been a bit sloppy recently, but let's take a look at what she thinks will happen between Blackburn Rovers and Portsmouth. a number of players I've played for both Blackburn Rovers and Portsmouth. Here are just a couple. So goal machine Andy Cole. Yes, he played in the blue and white halves for Blackburn Rovers. I think he was part of the League Cup winning side. And he also played for Pompey. Also, midfield Dynamo. Well, not really. Uh, Aaron McAwena played for blue and white Blackburn Rovers. And he also represented Portsmouth. I think he played uh, for more, more games for Pompey than he did for Rovers. 
and Premier League winning captain Tim Sherwood played in the blue and white halves. As you can see here, he is in the, the classic red and black away strip for Blackburn Rovers. And he, he also represented Portsmouth. And here he is in a jumbo size triple XL large t-shirt. Um, and again, he played for them towards the end of his career. Now, that was just a snippet of some of the players who have played for both Blackburn Rovers and Portsmouth. If you want to check out a full list, head over to my uh, WordPress site details in the description below. I have a whole list of players who have played for both Rovers and Portsmouth. I'm going to bring back a couple more when we head down to Fratton Park towards the back end of the season. Well, there you have it, folks. That's pretty much all I've got for you today. But before you go, make sure you head over to my YouTube channel. Check out my FIFA 95 hack series. We've done the Portsmouth game. Bit of, a, bit of a goal frenzy in that bad boy. Check that one out. And while you're there, give me a like for this video and make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I am on Twitter, SoundCloud, Facebook, and iTunes if you want to check me out on the go. My final thought for Mowbray is play some youth, explosive start, get an early one or two goals, and then maybe, just maybe, things will start to click in place. We need to show these pros, these seniors, that uh, their place is not guaranteed um, if you, the defense has always been a disaster for the past two, three, maybe even four seasons, our defense has been pretty, pretty shitty, um, playing, putting square pegs in round holes. Naimbi is not center back. Elliot Ward is a donkey. Charlie Mulgrew, loving the bits, skipper, realistically is not center back. You need to start playing center backs in center back positions. You have Scott Wharton. You've got Paul Downing, uh, when he's available. Um, you've got some, some youngsters coming through. And maybe, just maybe, that's a focus of our attention for the January transfer window if you have any money left to spend or any room to, to add. So round pegs in round holes will probably win you games. And then when you look further up the field, you've got to give Joe Nuttall a shot. He's on fire in the under-23s. You know, form is form. I'm pretty sure he's going to get you a goal. If the service is correct, if you provide Chapman maybe Dak, someone creative enough to uh, get the ball to his feet, to his head, whatever. Feed the nut, you'll score. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.